This is One on One. There he is, Frank Costella, who is instructor of biological science and colonology program at Bergen County Technical School in Teterboro. Good to see you. Good to see you, Steve. What the heck is colonology? Colonology is the discipline to blending of culinary arts and food science. The, the term colonology was actually trademarked by the Research Chefs Association, the RCA. Um, to, it's, a, it's a group of chefs that were also researchers and combined the two disciplines into one. Interesting, you're a former chiropractor, became yes. a biology teacher. Yes. This is part of our classroom close-up yes, series that we do in cooperation with the New Jersey Education Association. Um, I'm fascinated by this, but before we talk anymore in the studio, what's always great is we have these setup pieces that the NJA produces, the classroom close-up right. on NJTV. It tells a story way better than I ever could. We'll go to the video and we'll go back and talk to Frank. Whenever you think about the healing process, it's important to consider the part nutrition plays. And if you're going to talk about food, here's a great place to start. Don't be fooled, this is not the kitchen at your favorite restaurant. We're at Bergen County Technical High School, and these students are hard at work creating nutritious dishes that they've designed to please the palates of pediatric cancer patients. When you hear about like, people with cancer, you can like really feel how how bad it must be for them, so we just, as cliche as it might sound, we just pour our heart and soul kind of into it as best as we can. Knowing that we're helping people that are in need, and it just makes you feel better about yourself. On average, for every 10,000 children in the United States, one or two develop cancer each year. But today, nearly 80% of children diagnosed with cancer become long-term survivors. With so many kids undergoing treatment, there's a real need for a variety of appealing menu items. Children with cancer don't eat very well during therapy. It's hard for some of them to eat, and they don't choose the right foods, and it's always an issue. So Hackensack University Medical Center teamed up with culinology students from Bergen County Technical High School to develop this comforting cuisine. So tell me about uh, what you've already made here and how we're going to make some more of them. Well, right now we have chips and dip, and the dip, it incorporates all of the nutritional groups. Collaboration is an essential ingredient. Marketing students at Bergen County Academies are working on the business side. We take whatever products they give us and we figure out how to sell it, uh, what possible costs are, where to put the product in stores, whether in the hospital, and things like that. We're looking at potential markets, different just distribution channels, just the getting the product from the kitchen to the stores. Another partner is Rutgers University, providing guidance throughout the process. You can of course do a lot of trial and error and get there, but if you have the science background then you know why and you can get there much faster. So that's, that's why the science kind of helps you guide there much faster. What inspired you to do this? What are you getting out of this? That, that good feeling that you know that you're actually helping someone, and like besides yourself, and helping out someone else in this world. It's just a magical feeling. We get to be creative, and uh, we get to express ourselves within the food that we're making. And this is our way of reaching out to people, you know? Letting them know, like, we're your age, but we want to help you. Knowing that you're going to help kids, too, kind of just gave us, like, the mojo, like, it pushed us even harder to create something. It's really good. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I'm going to leave about 400 calories here <laughs> with you, all right? Understandable. <laughs> That's fascinating stuff. Let's update some things here, Frank. In uh, 2009, you were diagnosed with multiple myeloma. myeloma. Explain what that is. Multiple myeloma is an incurable blood cancer um, that affects the plasma cells, which produce our antibodies. Um, I was diagnosed in February 2009 went through extensive chemotherapy, two stem cell transplants, uh, was out of work for about six months. I'm in remission right now, um, every two months, go get checked and you know, hope, right now everything's stable, so. But there's a connection between that, right. let's just say very challenging <laughs> life experience, right. and you guys are creating food, there was a food project for oncology patients. Yes. I'm thinking, this guy's creative. Right. 
well, the, the, the idea behind this project we're working on now, about a little over a year ago, our uh, administration came to us and they wanted to do a collaborative project between the Clonology students in, T in Teterboro, which is the campus I'm at, and our sister school in Hackensack, the Bergen Academies. And the project entailed the Clonology students coming up with a, some kind of unique product or line of products that, they, that could be marketed and the students in Hackensack were enrolled in an entrepreneurship project right. and they would be doing market research and developing and, and advising the, page, uh, the, uh, the students, the colonology students, as far as feasibility of these products, you know, uh, packaging and competition and so on. And when the teachers in the program met and we talked about different ideas, it was not too long after I had returned back to work. And I remember going through the experience of chemo and, and, and the, the transplants and any chemo patient that you talk to will tell you the same thing. The, the nausea, the, uh, the mouth sores that some patients develop, the, just the general fatigue that you have, mm. that you have no desire to want to eat. Are there some foods that uh, make more <laughs> sense than others in these well, in such a difficult situation? Well, yes and no. When you're in that setting in the hospital or in the transplant center, they're going to just tell you to, especially when you're going for transplant, eat anything that has to be cooked very well. So you have to stay away from any fruits and vegetables that are raw, which you would think would be right. good for you. But because of the chance of any bacteria or anything right. like that, right. you have to stay away because your immune system is compromised. And Quite frankly, the food that they serve in the hospital is not the most uh, palatable food to begin with. So, you know, reflecting back on that when I came back to school and, and this uh, idea was proposed to us, I said, why don't we talk to the students about coming up with some kind of uh, food product that not only has the calories that the patients do need for energy, but is nutritious, properly balanced, right. and tastes good. What'd you come up with? Well, the students came up with seven different items. We have 21, the, the, the students left, in this project, okay, the students in this project are, the 21 students, they're juniors in the program. They have seven groups. They all came up with different products. They did their own research on cancer and how it affects the body, how chemo affects them, and they all came up with different products. And you've seen some of them now. We have a, a butternut pot pie, uh, a, a, some, a raspberry carrot ice cream, um, tater tots that are called shakeables that have like a, like a fun, food because this project is really geared more towards pediatric cancer patients because right. the students could relate better to other kids their age. And um, you've seen some of the other ones on there as well. So there were seven different products. We actually have it narrowed down to about three right now that they're going to try this to This project to is ongoing. It's still ongoing, yes. What has this meant for you? It's, it's been great to see how kids can take this idea, something that affected me personally, and um, just run with it. I mean, we just proposed an idea to them and they said, look, they did yeah. their own research, they, they, they've been great. I mean, and just to see the passion that they put into it. I mean, so what they created, I, I mean, it just knocked me out when I saw them as well. I mean, it's just amazing stuff. Well, to see your passion as a teacher, by the way, former chiropractor, you're probably good at that. You're even better at this. Frank, I want to thank you thank very you, much. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for having great me. Great job. Thank you. Keep it up. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child. Wells Fargo, the law firm of Gibbons PC. psc and g committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. And by Barnabas Health. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.